Welcome, everybody. We are going to wait a few minutes until everybody's been allowed into the um, meeting. Um, just to let you know, this meeting is being video recorded and will be available on our website uh, a little while after it is over and gives us time to edit it. Um, and we will give you that uh, website address if you don't already know. Um, it's www.eye.uci.edu. And we'll put that up on the group chat. And we'll be starting in just a moment as soon as a few more people enter the room. Is that water for me or is that you? Awesome. All right, everyone, I'll get started now. Um, welcome to the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute Community Lecture Series. Um, tonight, we're talking about the annual eye exam, eye evolution, the future of vision care. We have two speakers tonight. The first one is Patricia Elbeck, who is the manager of the optical shop at the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute. And the second speaker tonight is Marcial Torres Jimenez, who's a strategic accounts manager for Essilor of America. So uh, we will take questions all at the end of the lecture. Feel free to post your questions in the chat. We'll get to them at the end and we can unmute you at the end also to ask questions verbally. Um, so I uh, will take it away, Patricia. Let's unmute Patricia. Okay, there we go. We were muted here. Okay. Go ahead. You want to? Go ahead. Okay. Hi, good evening. Um, so I am the optical shop manager at the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute. So some of you may have been familiar with us um, and I probably helped a couple of you. Uh, what um, did you do? You have to connect to the audio. Uh, that's new. Can you find anything? Just quickly, oh. if you could all put yourselves on mute so that we don't get any background interference and we'll unmute you at the end when it comes time for questions. Oh. Yeah. Okay, am I unmuted now? Okay. okay. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, again, I'm the optical shop manager at the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute. So some of you guys have been probably patients of ours. And if you're not, you're welcome to come in and, and get to know us. Um, today, we're gonna talk about annual eye exams and the differences between an optometrist, an ophthalmologist, and an optician. Um, I am a certified registered optician with the state of California. Um, I'm also certified with the national um, boards. So let's start with talking about annual eye exams. I hope this is not, oops, sorry. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. So first of all, I um, wanna talk about um, the importance of different eye exams. And then we're gonna later on um, talk about a little bit about the new COVID protocols that are happening in different um, eye practices. Um, so as far as annual eye exams and the importance of annual eye exams, um, it's really important to start off when kids are generally um, at a younger age. Um, not many people understand the importance of infant um, exams. Um, so infancy is a program that is national. It also helps um, parents understand the importance of basically having children's prescriptions or getting their um, health care for their eyes um, checked. So infancy was developed um, by the American Optometric Association and Johnson & Johnson Vision. It is a free program. 
not many people know or not many people understand that during the well check baby checks um, that infants go through, parents are able to see an ophthalmologist or an opt um, optometrist to get their child's um, vision needs. So what infancy does is it allows you to kind of combine that well visit check to make sure that your child is developing in the way that they should for their um, eye and their vision care. Most pediatric doctors will only um, check vision for children for movement, shadowing, things like that. They don't really go deep inside to see if there's anything that's going on with the eyes. And usually that doesn't happen until later on when they're starting to develop their social skills. When they start to not react in the social environment, that's when then they'll start going into um, seeing an optometrist or an ophthalmologist. Or when children's eyes start to move or not do certain, um, certain things like their eye imbalances will start to move towards if they're stressed, if they're sick, um, what happens is the muscles will start to relax. And so they'll have some movement either going inwards or outwards. So these are things that an ophthalmologist would be seen for. Um, this is what we call a strabismus condition. Um, so sometimes you can train an eye to move because the development of the brain will allow um, the vision to be clearer if it's um, functioning right. So if it's not, you'll, you'll start to hear things like patching. Some ophthalmologists will patch the good eye in order for the bad eye to catch up and so that the, the brain can develop in its optical nerves in a, in a fast and convenient way. So this is a program that is free. Not many people understand um, or know about it, but if you talk to your pediatric doctor, they'll be able to refer you to a clinic that will be able to help with those situations. So one out of every four children has a vision problem. And that's important that um, most parents talk to the schools, develop a relationship with the nurses to find out what's going on. Um, an annual exam is not required to be in school or to be done prior to entering school. Uh, unlike there are some programs, some dental programs that are out, we are hoping um, the um, Board of Opticianry, or not the Board of Opticianry, I'm sorry, the um, California Op um, Optometry Board is actually looking to push um, for some legislation so that the vision is part of that school introduction, going back into school, not only getting your dental check, but also getting the vision check, because that's really important. A lot of people don't understand that some behavioral problems are due to having um, vision issues. Um, there's also uh, issues with being able to um, socialize. So you'll have a child that's really quiet or you'll have a child that's really expressive. Those two types of activities really have um, an effect on how their school, um, how their school uh, participation incurs. So always look towards getting an annual visit. The schools are funded to have an annual um, eye exam, usually for, usually within the first three years, um, the school nurses will, will do some type of um, corrective screening. So then as the child develops, you're gonna get into more of the teenage years. You're gonna get into driving. You're gonna get into the having a new job. Having a new job um, sometimes requires um, being able to see well. Um, so you're gonna see new technology coming. And a lot of the things that we're going through right now um, has an effect on people's vision. Uh, being next to a computer screen, looking at the phone, We've been seeing a lot of development in um, eye conditions happening at a younger age, um, more so than we did in the past. We're usually about 39, 40-ish is where you start to have that, that focal length issue, uh, reading, anything up close. But now with the um, onset of cell phones, computers, um, you're not, the focal length is getting a little bit closer and unfortunately, having your eyes be fixated at a certain length for a long period of time kind of has um, an effect on your distance vision because your, your lens of the eye is not fluctuating as much. 
So it becomes stiff. And the longer time between being able to focus from distance to near has become a struggle for most people. So we will, um, in our next presentation, Marcial will talk about the different types of lenses that will actually help with those situations. So let's talk about senior care. Okay, you've gotten older, your body's changed, your eyes will change just as well. And if you're a patient that's been wearing contact lenses from early on, sometimes don't really understand the importance of having an eye exam done yearly because they feel like, well, I've had the same contact lenses for the last you know, 30, 40 years. I don't seem the need to change or have my vision checked. Um, that is not the case. Things happen behind the eye that you don't necessarily see. Uh, you don't see it on, you know, it, it, there's effects that happen that are not right away very, um, they don't grab your attention as, as far as, you know, you don't just kind of wake up and, oh, I can't see. It happens gradually over time. And there's a lot of conditions that actually have no symptoms that can all of a sudden, there can be an onset and then it's a little too late to do any kind of preemptive help, you know, to get those situations or get those conditions taken care of. So the importance of the annual eye exam are throughout your life. It becomes much more important as you age, of course. Um, we all know that 40, when 40 hits, the focal length gets a little shorter. Um, that's when they start, you start with a condition called presbyo. Um, a presbyopia is basically the fact that your lens in the back of the cornea is not flexing as easily as it used to. Um, so your lag time between going from distance to reading, and everybody has that person who says, hey, mom, look at this. And they throw a paper in front of you and you're just like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, that's a little too close. My eyes are not focusing as clearly as they used to. Well, that's because the, the lens isn't as um, flexible as it used to be. So you kind of need help with that. Um, then you'll start getting introduced to things like progressive lenses, bifocals. Um, those are lined. Um, bifocals have basically multifocal lenses that can give you a distance and a reading prescription, as well as the trifocals, which give you that intermediate area. Progressive lenses basically are a distance to intermediate to reading, but there's a whole bunch of focal points in between. Um, they're easily to get confused as far as going from a progressive to a line bifocal or just saying a multifocal. So your optician should be able to understand what your activities are and determine for you which kind of lens would be more suitable for, for those um, types of activities. Um, some people do very well with a line bifocal. That is just basically distance and reading. There is an image jump. But nowadays, most people like to have progressive lenses, which basically give you a seamless transition from distance uh -huh. to reading. Uh, they're a little bit harder to get used to. Uh, your optician would definitely be somebody who you'd want to sit down with and talk to after your exam and go over all of the different functions of those types of lenses. You also have glaucoma, macular degeneration, cataracts. Once we don't think about cataracts, but long term exposure to ultraviolet can. can is a condition that causes cataracts. So if you're not actively wearing sunglasses from early on until you get a little bit older, you may develop cataracts. Um, cataracts can start off very minimally and it kind of is like looking through a dirty window. Um, your vision starts to get a little bit fuzzy and sometimes you think, well, maybe I just need a, an upgrade in my, or my, my prescription. Maybe I need a stronger lens. Well, you can get a stronger lens, but that haziness is always going to be there because that lens is starting to get coated. And with that coating, you can't just take it away. So eventually what you'll hear is the doctor says, well, you know, your cataract will get to a certain point and then we'll have a cataract removed. Um, what they like to do is they like to do both eyes. So they kind of wait for one to develop more so than the other. Um, what they do is they will take out the crystalline lens, replace it with the interocular lens. Um, it, but it's still, you'll still need reading glasses at the end because that lens is being changed and that lens will not flex. So you won't be able to adapt to that reading focal length as you normally would. So even with cataract surgery, you still need reading glasses in order to kind of um, do some of the work that you may do if you do up close work. 
So with cataracts, um, you want to make sure that you're starting at an early age, start wearing those sunglasses, make sure you get that UV protection on those lenses. Then you have diabetic retinopathy. Now, diabetes has been a real um, challenge and a condition that has really kind of uh, developed massively um, in our uh, just in everyday people, we are seeing more of an onset of diabetes. And especially now with the COVID coming on because a lot of people aren't really going out and exercising as much. Their eating habits have changed. You're home a little bit more, you're snacking a little bit more. So diabetes has kind of been something that's just kind of flourished over the, the years. Um, so with diabetic retinopathy, you don't really see the changes of that. It's really important if you have been um, I guess, uh, diagnosed as a diabetic, even diabetic twos and ones, it's real important to have that annual eye exam because you wanna make sure that the lens or the, the blood vessels in your eyes are not breaking, um, they're not leaking um, because that can really um, lead to blindness. Um, and you don't really see it and you don't really feel it. It's something that you really have to have checked. Um, so it's important that even though you figure, well, you know, going to an annual exam, exam that's because I'm just gonna need a new prescription. That's really not what an annual exam does. An annual comprehensive exam is gonna check everything. It's gonna check your pressures. It's gonna to check to make sure that there's no leaking um, blood vessels. And just if there's anything going on um, in the back of the eye that you wouldn't normally see. So um, another thing that has developed over the years that has been more predominant is dry eye. You'll see a lot of commercials with different kinds of medications for dry eye. You'll have your doctor talk to you about using different um, techniques um, for dry eye, uh, like brooder masks, um, which the optical um, shop does carry. Basically, brooder masks are, or uh, hot compresses is, is what it is. You put it in a microwave, you, know, you put it on your eyes, and you're being able to um, kind of move and get that liquid moving in the, um, the glands there. So then that way the, the oils are secrete and you're having a little bit more comfortable time with your eyes. So dry eyes is something that's really important to kind of keep an eye on. And it's really important to kind of keep, um, you know, just making sure that you're um, not developing anything more severe, especially if you wear contact lenses. Contact lenses and dry eye, they're not a good match, but you can still, there are a lot of contacts out there that have a lot of um, extra uh, moisture to them. So they're a little bit more comfortable. Again, you may not, even though you've been wearing the same contact prescription for years, you have to go in and have it rechecked every year just to make sure that what you're wearing is not doing any damage that can happen for long-term damage to the eye. So again, presbyopia. Hitting that 40, not being able to see clearly up close, but you know, having struggling with that computer. Um, those are things that will kind of force people into going and get an exam, getting a prescription done, but it is also important just to, to also check the health of the eye. So glaucoma is a pressure um, issue that happens with the eye. It is something that is an onset that can happen immediately. It can happen over time. You'll talk to your ophthalmologist. And even your optometrist can uh, do different things that were, they can check your pressures. Sometimes if it gets up or into more severe levels of pressure, um, you'll have to go in and have like um, pressure checks every week. Uh, so it's, it's really important because that can lead to an onset of blindness immediately if it gets out of hand. Macular degeneration is a common eye disorder. Most people over 65 develop some type of macular degeneration. Um, one of the things that the doctors do recommend for patients that are struggling with macular um, is they will start to recommend lenses that are colored lenses. A brown lens um, helps with shadowing because you start to, to lose that color um, enhancing enhancements when you're, when you're seeing your colors. So browns will actually allow you to see your reds, your yellows, your blues, your greens in a more kind of vibrant way. And we talked a little bit about cataracts. It's important, even if it's a, a very, you know, sometimes your doctors will say, oh, well, you're developing a cataract. Well, that's not a major thing, but it's not gonna, there's nothing that can be reversed on that. So you definitely have to keep track on it and kind of make sure that, you know, you're having the proper um, uh, checks 
uh, to see how it's properly developing. Because the cataract, even if it's just slight, the doctor won't really recommend surgery until, I mean, it's, it's gotta be what they consider ripe. They'll say, you'll start to hear, well, your cataract's ripe and it's ready for surgery. So once you start to hear that, then again, you just gotta start prepping that, you know, hey, I'm gonna have to have surgery. I'm gonna have this lens. Still not gonna take away from glasses. It's just gonna kind of reverse and where you're gonna to have to have more of a, a reading prescription. And then we talked about the diabetic retinopathy, uh, having that checked, that's important. So all of these things happen in your annual exams. The doctor will check for all of these different things, regardless of whether how old you are or um, how young you are. And you think, well, that's never gonna happen. Um, well, you know, things are happening, you know, with the covering of the masks. I, I hear a lot of doctors talk about the different things that are happening because now when you're breathing through a mask, you're actually kind of breathing into the eye. Um, and so there's been a lot of um, issues with conjunctivitis that um, a lot of um, the doctors have been kind of buzzing around that they're seeing more cases. So things like that, you just never know what's happening in the back of the eye and that's why it's important to always be seen. Now, Medicare and Medicaid will cover most people for a comprehensive check, okay? It does not cover for a refraction. So even if you go to an ophthalmologist, they can do all of the health checks, your pressures, the seeing what's going on in the back of the eye. Um, those are all covered under basic Medicare coverages. You may not walk out with a prescription. You may be referred to, um, like with us at Gavin Herbert, um, we actually get ophthalmologists referring to optometrists. With the optometrists, unfortunately, refractions are not covered under the Medicare or Medicaid coverage. So there is some out-of-pocket cost to that. Uh, you would um, want to kind of check around, see what your local providers are offering uh, for just a refraction only, because you've already had your comprehensive, and that can be billed towards your medical, your medical insurance. Okay, so what's the difference between an ophthalmologist, an optometrist, and an optician? Ophthalmologists generally deal with surgeries. They, they correct vision impairments with surgeries versus an optometrist who corrects vision um, issues or conditions with um, spectacles or contact lenses with, with actual um, equipment. Um, so an ophthalmologist will mostly correct with surgeries, optometrists mostly correct with medical devices such as eyewear, contact lenses. Now, an optician, we're part of that. As an optician, we are actually what we consider the pharmacists of the three. We actually are studied, we, we study the lens technology, we study the frames. Um, we basically give you the recommendations based off of your prescription of what's good for you the lifestyle that you're leading, the activities you do, your hobbies. These things are things that we take into consideration when we're prescribed or when we're making glasses for you. So that's basically what an optician does. We kind of help you and guide you along the way. So we're making sure that you're getting the best um, technology that is offered um, that would help specifically for you. Okay, so what makes the difference between going to a private practice versus going into ordering online? Online has been very, very uh, popular. Um, you go on, you, you buy your $20 pair of glasses. You know, is there anything different between going there and going to a, a practitioner? Um, there is. Um, the quality is definitely different. The expertise is definitely different. Um, you know, you're able to go into a private practice, establish a relationship. We understand what your needs are directly. Um, you know, we're, we're always available. And then there's, there's some things that with your eye equipment, your eyeglasses or contact lenses, they, you know, if you buy them online, you may need to go in for an adjustment or they may not fit correctly, or you may not even be wearing them correctly because of an ill-fitted pair of glasses. That's what we do as a private practitioner. We're there for you. We, you know, will help you in selection. We kind of gear you towards, you know, when you're online, you're, you're kind of maneuvering on your own. Um, there's not a lot of guidance there. So, you know, I understand that sometimes financially it's better 
Um, but you know, it 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 doesn't outweigh the cost or it doesn't outweigh the importance of you know having a good quality pair of eyeglasses um, and having that open communication with an actual live person that can that can help you and, and guide you. So there are different options out there. There's not saying you can't use many of them, but just keep in mind that going into a private practice or a private uh, practitioner kind of opens up a little bit more um, uh, offerings and, and expertise. Okay, so again, you know, cost, you know, you're, you're, you're gonna be paying a little bit more in a private practice, but you can also utilize your insurance a little bit more. Some of the places um, such as Costco and uh, online retailers will, say that they are part of your uh, or take your vision care um, uh, coverage but what they're really not telling you is that they're really considered out of network so you may not be getting the full benefit of your glasses of benefits going through an online retailer or a costco because you know they're they really are considered out of network uh, so you kind of want to make sure that you kind of understand the differences between in network and out of network and what your um, benefit coverage um, is best for you. So let's talk about a little bit about COVID-19 and what's going on. Um, should you seek care? Should you, you know, everybody's been in lockdown for the last year or so. We're kind of confused, like, are they open? Are they not open? Are they seeing patients? Are they not seeing patients? You know, is there something that I need to go into and see a practitioner in person. Uh, there are some situations. There are some situations where you're actually able to do a uh, telemedicine, where you can actually talk to the doctor and kind of get a, a a little bit of a, a, a history, so that the doctor kind of knows. Well, is this something that I need to see in person, or is this something that we can kind of um, do over the uh, over the video conference? Well, um, it just depends. Uh, if you obviously are having pain, if you're seeing flashes of light, those things are important. Those things you would triage into seeing a practitioner, but is it safe? You know, we haven't been able to go out. Um, I know that most optometrists um, have been taking patients throughout the, the COVID. I know at Gavin Herbert Eye Institute, um, the optical shop had not closed. We have been open throughout the entire um, uh, COVID um, time of people not being able to be open. Um, we are considered essential. There are patients that, you know, needed their glasses or patients that needed their contact lenses. Um, contact lenses is a little tricky because, you know, there was uh, patients that wanted to start wearing contacts, but they didn't want to come in. And we weren't really allowing to do any trainings because it was really hands-on. So new, new contact lenses, generally had to wait until after um, most of the mandates had gotten lifted to allow patients to come in. Um, as far as glasses go, you should always have a pair of backup glasses. You never know, even for the slightest inconvenience of not having anything, you know, you should always have a backup pair just in case um, anything like this happens again, and then you, you're, you're stuck with not having any type of backup. So one or two pairs of backup is very uh, important to have. Because um, when you don't have it, you really struggle and, and you understand what it is not to have um, good eyesight. So you'll notice some changes when you go into an office nowadays. Um, as far as with the COVID, you're going to notice that there's going to be some offices that only allow patients to come in one at a time. Um, we have started checking the temperatures. We're making sure everything's clean. At our optical shop, we actually have a UV box. So after a patient takes or chest uh, glasses off of our board, we have them have them put it into a tray. We don't let the patients put the glasses back onto the board. We actually have them put them into a tray. And then after they're done doing their selection, we put the remaining glasses into a box and, and, and then we put it into a UV box so that it kills any of the germs that are out there. And then we will clean them and then put them back on the board. So those are things that you're gonna see change. Um, you're gonna see uh, changes in being able to pick up the glasses, the delivery of glasses. Um, we, you know, generally when you're able to just come in and, hey, I'm here to pick up my glasses, 
those days are kind of a little bit out there or not uh, there anymore. So it's always nice to kind of call ahead to let us know that, hey, I'm going to come in about 530 or six o'clock to pick up my glasses. That way we know what the flow is of the, the, the people. We can say, hey, we have so many people in at that time or that's really a busy time for us. Maybe this time would be more convenient for you. So just never feel that you can't reach out to any of your private practices and just kind of give them like, hey, you know, I'm, I know my glasses are in. Is this a good time for me to come in? If not, is there a more convenient time? So communication is really important during this time. So again, you're gonna see a lot of changes. You're gonna see changes in follow-up questions or um, questions regarding your history, questions in regard to your exposure. Uh, you'll see, again, temperature checks, hand cleaning, things like that. So those are all different. Those are uh, the way that the flow of uh, patients coming into an office, those are all gonna be changing. So. Hopefully we'll get into a little bit more of a, a casual e ease up on, on these things. But for the time being, I think it just makes more people more comfortable knowing that these protocols are in place. Okay, so oh, I'll talk to you a little bit about how um, the coronavirus affects your eyes. Well, it, it spreads, it can be spread through the eyes. So um, wearing your masks, making sure that you're not standing too close, um, the most important thing is making sure that your hands are clean. Um, you never know how many times you actually touch your eyes or rub. Um, so you want to always make sure that your hands are clean because you can actually kind of spread because, um, you know, the eyes are an open area too. Okay, so here's some things that you want to do to protect yourself. If you wear contact lenses, Consider switching to uh, glasses or having a backup pair. Give your eyes a rest. Um, make sure that you know, you're know you kind of not allowing your eyes to get over fatigued by wearing contact lenses. So you wanna uh, give them a break. You wanna also wanna make sure that you're, when you're wearing glasses, that if you're gonna be in, a, in a, a, an exposed area, you know, even with work, you wanna maybe get a pair of safety glasses, um, something that, you know, if you know that you're gonna be around a lot of people or you can be exposed, safety um, protection of the eyes is important. You also wanna stock up on your eye medicine. If you have some past history of having dry eye or anything like that, you wanna make sure that you have a good stock because if you're not allowed to go into, or if you don't feel comfortable going into your practitioner's office, you wanna have these things stocked up. Uh, avoid rubbing your eyes talked about that and practicing good hygiene and social distancing okay so annual eye exams are a lot more um than just getting a prescription of course you know it's it's about making sure that the health of your eyes are um being continually monitored uh, the older we get the most it, it's really important so again get those pressures checked get the back of the eye checked get your, your prescription updated um, because, you know, you can not get glasses for a couple of years. And I have patients that are like, oh, it's been about five years since I've gotten glasses or gotten new glasses. I can still see, but not as clearly. And then they get a new pair of glasses and they're like, wow, the difference is amazing. I can't believe I went so long without seeing because your eyes will accommodate um, for not seeing well. So it's really important. And you don't want to do that because you're going to start getting headaches. You're going to notice that at the end of the night, your eyes are going to get, start to get fatigued. Um, that's, you know, those are things that are preventable. Um, you definitely can, uh, when you get a new pair of glasses and you're seeing correctly, your eyes don't have to work as hard. Okay. So I am going to actually turn this over and um, to Marcel will um, be talking about lens designs. Uh, oh. Sorry, bear with me for one moment. That's right.
Okay, I'm gonna try to stand in a better position for the light, but I'm just gonna be talking to you really quickly about new lens technology. Um, when we wanna to talk to you today about new lens technology, what the reason it's important is because depending on where you're going, depending on where you're getting your lenses, um, it may not be taken into account the actual um, needs of the modern, modern visual, visual environment. So one of the things that I like to talk about um, that I really like to focus on when I always talk about my lenses is 20 feet and why 20 feet is important to um, anybody really who's buying glasses. At the end of the day, when we measure 20 feet, we measure our optical infinity. And what that means is that for our purposes, we, we can't really see past 20 feet. That's the maximum distance we, we should, that we should see clearly. So when a doctor measures you and gives you a prescription, they're either giving you a prescription for 20 feet, which is your distance prescription, or they're giving you a prescription for about two feet, which is your reading prescription. And there's really no in between. If you get a, a progressive lens or a bifocal lens, you end up getting a lens that's designed for 20 feet at the top and then two feet at the bottom. So again, there's really no in between. And this starts to become important when we understand how far 20 feet is and the kinds of things that we do at a 20 foot viewing distance. So um, these are just some examples, but as you can see that um, we really have to dig to find examples of things that we do at a 20 foot viewing distance. Um, during our normal day, if we're at a desk, uh, if we're in our own home, if we're in an office, we're probably not gonna be utilizing that 20 foot viewing distance. And this really starts to become important when we think about, again, what the visual needs are in the modern visual environment. So one thing to keep in mind is that the idea of creating a lens that's designed for 20 feet is almost a hundred years old. And there's a lot of things that are, that are equally as old, you know, and we don't use those things anymore. And we don't use those things for good reason. There's, there's better stuff out there. There's better, um, there's better technology out there that can serve our needs and make our lives a lot easier than older technology would. So this is important because of our interaction with media and the amount of time that we spend interacting with media. And it's really important, not simply because you see the different times here in this chart of the time we spend um, you know, watching TV, using a smartphone, um, maybe playing in a video game. But at the end of the day, what's starting to happen now is it's not only watching TV or, or using a smartphone or playing a video game, it's doing all of those things at once. So you wanna try to understand that there's lenses that are designed for doing all of those things at once. And there's lenses that are simply not designed for that because it wasn't something that the visual needs of you know, the masses were demanding when that lens was made. So our modern visual environment and, and where we work and our modern workspace is extremely dynamic now. And that means that our screens are at different angles, that our screens are below us, above us. And um, what I'm getting to is the idea of, of a lot of lenses out there is not made to meet this need. It's made on an older concept and really it, it creates a lot of issues for the wearer when they're trying to use that progressive lens in the modern visual environment. We make compensations for our, um, our posture position, our neck, our head, and all of these things can lead to issues um, that are seen as far as um, uh, what's kind of called computer visual syndrome or computer vision syndrome, but they're all different types of fatigue that a patient will experience when trying to compensate. Now, when you look at the design of a traditional classic progressive lens versus really there's only one that, that is designed for multiple screens, they're designed just like you see here on the screen. They're designed for you to use at a specific angle and a specific posture. And as you can see, there's a very slim possibility that you sit like that when you're using your computer. And there's an even slimmer possibility that the computer that you're using primarily is that computer. The screen doesn't sit at that angle anymore. It's a smartphone, it's a tablet. All of these things are, are much more dynamic and much more moving, um, just a lot more moving pieces than was planned for when we first started making these lenses. So some of the things that are happening to our patients and some of the things that we're complaining about as eyeglass wearers and not understanding are some of our ergonomic issues as far as our neck, our, you know, our head and neck pain, but also eye strain and headaches and different visual fatigue. Now, these things are happening, one, because we're having to adjust our necks and our heads to get the lens to work properly, but two, because the lens itself isn't even designed for that, for that distance that we're using it for. We're, we're compensating up upon compensating and it's creating visual issues for us. Um, so 
What I want to talk about is one lens that I, I do have and the one lens that we, I do talk about specifically, and I'm going to talk about the technology in that lens and why it does what it does. So the one lens that I do have that I know is different that we've designed differently is, is called the Verilux X series. This lens has a technology that's known as Extend Technology. And um, for the first part here, we're going to just be a little bit technical on the lens level. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more what that technology does, and then I'll help you understand how it's going to benefit you, you know, in your day-to-day -day life. So the Extend technology is a technology that's designed to allow for the patient to experience a larger volume of vision at arm's length. Arm's length is roughly about two feet. And what we try to do is we try to create a more natural feeling for everything you see at two feet. If you're currently a progressive lens wearer, you can understand that you would have to distinctly point your head at what you're looking at if you're not wearing this lens. But with a lot of the modern concepts that uh, Essilor is working on and developing these products is the most important thing to us now is designing lenses that work best within that five foot, three foot arms range, because that's where we live most of our lives. You know, we don't live most of our lives 20 feet away. So this lens helps really create um, a more comfortable range of focus where you're going to see in that arm's length. The second thing it does is it creates a very specific type of lens, which no longer produces a fishbowl effect when you're looking through the bottom of the lens. So it creates wearing the lens and walking around in the lens a much more natural and just much more comfortable experience. Um, finally, we have a technology in there that's called Synchronize that's there to help the wearer experience more balance and wearing the lens. And it's there as a modern solution. So as we get into it, um, I'll explain what that does as well. So the second thing is, what does it do? What does it do? And what are those deliverable benefits? Um, remember, I said this lens has um, a, is really designed for that five foot to, to three foot range. And what that does for you is it creates an uh, experience where you can look at multiple angles through the bottom of the lens potentially looking at multiple screens and being able to see those screens more comfortably, more like a single vision lens, instead of having to adjust your head and neck to use the gaze angles um, that weren't initially designed for that anyway in another type of lens. The second thing it does is it, is it creates that more natural feeling when walking. And finally, that last thing, it does that balancing thing. Well, this is gonna become important as you start to get older and as the lens in your eye starts to age. Uh, as we talked a little bit earlier in the presentation, um, your eye has a natural lens in it that over time is going to atrophy and, and solidify and, and start to crust, and that's going to be called a cataract. Well, as that cataract develops, what happens is the lens itself in your eye will move slower and slower as you age. The balance in this lens helps you adapt much more easily if you're sitting on your smartphone and then you switch up to look at a TV that might be 10 feet away. If we didn't have nice smooth transitions between there, your physical lens in your eye would experience a delayed reaction time in trying to see those two things. So again, these lenses are really designed for the modern visual environment. This Verilux X lens is designed to eliminate looking for the sweet spot by creating uh, the ability to look at multiple screens with one lens without really having to move your head around too much and, and search for that sweet spot. It should be comfortable. It should be clear. It feel like a single vision lens. The second thing it does is it creates that um, you know, that unique shape that allows you to look down through the bottom of the lens and not feel uncomfortable stepping off of curbs, stairs, or escalators. And finally, um, it allows you to instantly focus with having that balance between the lens. If you're sitting on the couch and, you know, looking at a tablet or a smartphone or on Zoom with friends and then switch back to the TV and um, start to experience in that delay that reminds you you're old. So the lens itself is definitely uh, designed to, again, meet those needs in the modern visual environment. And uh, we want to make sure that, you know, when we're looking at our lenses, when we're going to buy lenses, that we know that there are literally thousands of progressive lenses on the market because at the end of the day, it is a business. However, there's not any other progressive lens that promises to allow you to look at multiple screens at once. Um, the second thing we want to talk about when we talk about lenses is we want to make sure that our lenses are protecting, our, are protecting us against blue light. Now, blue light has been kind of a, a hot topic for at least the past five years, maybe slightly longer. So um, the talk about it, as you can see in the slides, um, we'll explain a little bit about what it is, and then we'll explain a little bit about how it can affect you. Uh, the first thing is we want to understand what blue light is. And if you look to, this, to the image to the left of the screen, what you're going to see is um, UV, then you'll see blue light, and then you'll see other visible light spectrum. Now, technically, UV is not visible. 
um, it's radiation. It starts to become visible at a certain point. And that point that it starts to become visible is that violet light point. So what uh, we have determined is most harmful is that more that most violet purple light. Now, blue light is everywhere and blue light is predominantly you know, available to us when the sun is out. Now, blue light is also beneficial. So as we look into the next set of slides, we can see that blue light does two things. Blue light has a benefit of uh, regulating our circadian rhythm. And what blue light does for us is it suppresses our natural production of melatonin. By suppressing our natural production of melatonin, blue light is gonna tell us that when we see the sunlight, when we experience the sun is out, it's time to be awake and it's time to be active. Uh, on that same note, when the sun goes down, it's time to fall asleep and it's time to not be active. So usually, naturally, the sun goes down maybe seven o'clock, eight, nine, 10, you would naturally fall asleep based on that circadian rhythm. Now what's happening in our modern visual environment is we are, we are now um, going to bed with cell phones and tablets and watching TV for prolonged hours before bed. And what we suspect is that that blue light that is falsely telling our body to not produce the melatonin because we're um, chemically telling our body that blue light is present, which would be telling our body chemically that it's time to be up and time to be awake. So there's a few things that we wanna, wanna keep in mind that there's a beneficial segment of blue light, that there's a harmful segment of blue light and that we wanna stay away from our computers, our TVs and our cell phones at least a few hours before bedtime. Um, you know, your opticians can help you understand a little bit more what products we have to help present a solution for this, but um, we want to make sure that the lenses you're selecting, again, meet the needs in the modern visual environment. So the secondary issue with blue light, aside from keeping you awake too late, is that the harmful blue light, the high energy violet light, causes uh, oxidation in the retina. And what that does is it, it basically kills the retina. And what we're seeing is we're seeing instances of age-related macular degeneration start to rise. Now, age-related macular degeneration is a natural thing. And it's, again, age-related. Unfortunately, you know, as humans, we're, we're deteriorating based on use. And, the, and your eyes are no different. The more you use your eyes, the more quickly they'll, they'll deteriorate. You know, people who live in environments where they're outside, where they're potentially maybe farming or, or doing any of a number of things where they're going to be outside, they can cause more damage to happen to their eyes more rapidly with that additional light um, based on being outside. Now, again, AMD is a natural thing, but what we're seeing now is we're seeing occurrences of it rise. And what we suspect is that the additional blue light that we're you know, putting into our bodies from using these digital, this digital media is gonna start to um, create a larger rise in that. And the second thing that's going to create a larger rise in that is our children inducing this blue light from a very young age and our medical system keeping us all alive much longer. So what we're going to see is we're going to see a lot of people um, would be living longer, but we want to try to talk to them early in their life to make sure that we keep their eyes healthy longer too. You know, we don't want people losing their eyesight for their final years. We want to make sure we're having those conversations and keeping them healthy. So one of the things that we want to make sure we talk to everybody about is the impact of harmful blue light, um, some potential options to protect you know, yourselves against blue light, and especially when you're outside in the sun. So some of the things that are considered to be effects of computer vision syndrome are any of a number of things that we see here, um, different pains that could be caused from sitting in, in uncomfortable postures, different neck pains, different head pains, different back pains, also visual fatigue, eye fatigue, and headaches. So at the end of the day, you can also see that you might be squeezing your eyes or your eyes feel like they're on fire or, you know, after every few minutes of looking at a screen, it just becomes uncomfortable. All of those are signs that, you know, your eyes are working too hard and you could benefit from a lens that is either protecting from the blue light, helping you with the focal point. Because again, if you're using a regular single vision lens and you're looking at your hand, that lens was designed for 20 feet, not for, um, you know, 10 inches. And, and that's going to cause visual fatigue. So we want to make sure that um, we keep in mind, you know, that we want to make sure we're educating ourselves about, um, you know, the lenses that we're getting. We want to make sure that every time that a prescription comes out, that we understand the importance of having multiple prescriptions, especially in the modern visual environment. You know, a full-time distance prescription is a 20-foot distance prescription. That's great if you're just driving all the time. But if you're driving and you're sitting in front of a computer, a, 
a computer, you're going to want a full-time business prescription, and you're going to want a second prescription for your computer. Because again, those focal points are very different. 20 feet driving is great, but 20 feet when you're supposed to be looking at a computer screen two feet away from you isn't going to work so well. And then finally, a, sun, a pair of sunglasses, because the sun is one of the most harmful sources of blue light out there. So, um, you know, I think we're ready for questions. Patricia's here with me. But, you know, we want to keep in mind that on the lens side of it, um, some of our lenses are designed for those modern visual needs. We can find those here in the optical shop. And, um, you know, we want to be asking the right questions. Great. Thank you both so much for that great presentation. We have a few questions in the chat and then we'll let you yeah, you can't use Trying to figure out who's speaking and if we can mute them just to um, make sure everybody else is in uninterrupted. Um, there we go. Um, we have one question that says, um, are these advanced progressive lenses available for application directly onto the eye in cataract surgery? Is there a good reason to decline the progressive lens in cataract surgery because vision will be better with the best lenses available either now or in the future with glasses? It, it's definitely not combined within cataract surgery. What we would do is we would recommend that you got a refraction following the cataract surgery and we could then give you the lens, you know, to place in a pair of glasses over, over the replaced cataract lens. Now in cataract surgery, I'm not an expert on, but we also offer telescopic lenses, which may be an option as well. So there, there, there's a way to resolve that issue with the lens surgery itself. However, if you did a standard cataract surgery, you could put the progressive lenses over it and still experience the benefits of those lenses. Great, another question uh, came in, is it better to use the dark screen mode on computers and cell phones as it pertains to blue light? Potentially it is, um, but really it would only be better if you used it at night. And that's why you see them change into a night sight mode. And what you want to pay attention to is how the color shift occurs. The color shift should occur and appear to be more yellow. If it just tints the screen, it's not really doing anything. When it appears to be more yellow, that's happening because they're removing blue light from the screen. So anytime you see something that appears to be more yellow, uh, the more yellow, the more blue light's being removed. It's not necessarily the best solution, but it's a good way to gauge it. Great, thank you. Another question just came in. Um, it says, would you recommend everyone who uses computers and cell phones more than a few hours a day to get blue light blocking lenses? Yeah, absolutely. Every, I mean, really, and, and the, the question is interesting to ask, right? Everyone that uses computers or cell phones more than a few hours a day, at the end of the day, we all do. We all use a computer and or a cell phone, you know, about four hours a day at least. So yeah, it, it's a good idea to, to look for blue light blocking lenses. And it's a good idea to keep in mind that the phone is a concern, but the sun is an even bigger concern. Um, is there a difference in the blue light blocking glasses that we can buy or are they, there is. How do you tell the difference between a good blue light blocking glass and one that's not as good? So what, what you want to do is definitely consult um, with somebody in the optical shop, uh, consult with your pra practitioner. But like I said, there's um, harmful blue light and there's beneficial blue light. So if you see a lens that's extremely yellow, then that means it's blocking out a lot of blue light. However, it may also be blocking out the beneficial blue light. Some of these lenses that have a slight hue or slight reflectivity are specifically formulated to block out the harmful blue light only. So it is a conversation that we want to have with, with the optical shop when we're getting those glasses. Because the opticians will be able to um, kind of gauge your kind of activities that you do and the hobbies and just kind of gauge how much exposure you're getting to blue light. And so that kind of helps us with our recommendations. Right. Well, just to be realistic, I think a lot of people are buying the blue light blocking glasses online just because it's easy. And if they don't need to go get their eyes checked, for example, so if one is going to be purchasing blue light blocking glasses online, are there any things that you can look for there? My recommendation, if you were to purchase blue light blocking glasses online would be um, to only use them at night um, to help with that melatonin production. Because uh, you know, the, at the end of the day, if they're specifically blue light blocking glasses like that, 
I'm, I'm thinking it's safe to assume they're going to have some type of a color to them, some type of a yellow to them, and that they're designed to block out a full spectrum of blue light, which includes the beneficial spectrum. And if you're using them at night, and it'll probably help you get to sleep more comfortably. Great. Um, uh, well, so that might have just answered this other question. Part two is when should you use blue light blocking lenses um, if they are the properly prescribed ones, both day and night or just at night? If they're properly prescribed, you can use them day and night. Um, like I said, some of the products that we have are formulated specifically to block out the harmful blue light. That can be worn full time and it won't have any effect on your sleep cycles, um, theoretically. However, the one that has the yellow color to it could have an effect on your sleep cycles. Primarily, if it has a heavy yellow to it and you wear it throughout the day, it, it could make you groggy when you would otherwise not be. Interesting. Um, are there any more questions? I don't see any more coming through in the chat, but if you'd like to ask a question uh, by speaking up, um, let us know. I have a question. Um, last year when I got my uh, glasses, I was asking my optimization whether I need to get a blue light blocking um, lens. And he said, uh, you don't need it unless you are in front of the computer all the time, like you are using 10 hours in front of the computer. And uh, so at that time I said, oh, I don't think I was in front of the computer 10 hours a day. But now if I add the cell phone, I think I am. Um, right. and so that, yeah, you want to, that's the biggest part you want to keep in mind is, is when we talk about screen time, I mean, it, it's, it includes everything. It's a TV, it's a computer, it's a cell phone, it's all of those things. I, my, my question is really, I, if I get the, the, I mean, are you guys the only place I can get like prescribed a blue light or, I mean, how should I, I, I don't know, like my, when I was talking to my optimization and uh, getting the glasses, he said he can sell me the blue light blocking, but he doesn't think I really need it. He himself use it because he, he was in front of the computer a lot. Because there anyway. is definitely a benefit to having it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in just in this industry, there's training is, is important, um, you know, as far as opticians, knowing the right line of questions to ask to get your lifestyle, your hobbies, take those into consideration. I mean, you really, when you're searching around for a, a private practice, um, you know, you should interview all of the different types of technicians and, and find somebody that is um, compatible and that's knowledgeable and that's asking you the right questions. As a uh, patient, you shouldn't be asking your, your optician or your uh, practitioner these types of questions. They should be asking you these types of questions so that they can get a better understanding of what to um, uh, you know, uh, recommend yeah. for you. To, to be fair, every single optometrist, I mean, unless they're a big box like a Walmart or a Costco or et cetera, every single optometrist is an independently owned office and they're all going to run it a little bit differently. Um, there are consultants out there who do what I do to help them, um, you know, get those products. However, it's entirely up to them what they dispense. Um, yes, the products are available to them. But um, it, they, you know, everybody makes their own business decisions based on what they do. I guess maybe I can ask how much, a, let's say I'm getting a glasses from uh, your institute. Um, if I want the blue light uh, blocking thing on top of what I'm getting, like should I get it for both the sunglasses and the reading glasses or just the reading glasses? And if it's like a layer to coat, coat later, right? How much more it will cost? Yeah. So you can't, you can't add it on after the fact. Um, if you have healthcare insurance, um, either all or some of it would be covered by your vision care. And if you're doing prescription sunglasses, they will have blue light protection unless the lens itself is blue, um, unless it's a tinted blue lens. Your prescription sunglasses have a UV inhibitor in them and the dark tint is also a blue light protection again, unless the lens is tinted like, like a bright blue. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about a blue filter on a sunglass. Um, it's the everyday um, glasses that what you would be adding that additional on. Yeah. So I, I, said, I, I mean, you would want to, you would want to, yeah, you would want to reach out, reach out to um, you know either either this optical shop or your preferred optical shop, and they could check your your coverage and let you know. Um, but but 
there is a number of products that are covered under different eye care coverages. So there's, there's a solid possibility either all, some of it or all of it would be covered by your, your coverage. Okay. I, I just want to make sure it's, it's a coating uh, on top of it. Uh, I normally yep. get a UV protection coating and the anti-scratch coating. Yep. I understand. Yeah. yeah. Usually okay. the, the, the blue block is um, part of an anti-reflective coating. They, there's some combinations of anti-reflective with the blue block. And, and the other thing, I guess, if, if I can just give you one product that you would want to look at, if you want to make sure all of your glasses have transitions lenses in them, all transitions lenses are blue light lenses. So when a transition lens appears to be clear, it's a 20% blue filter against harmful blue light. And when a transitions lens is fully activated and it looks like a sunglass, it's a 95% blue blocker. So that's one thing you can always ask for. And you know, especially with all of our products now, they're always gonna have that blue light. So if, if it's a transitions brand lens, it'll be at least 20% when it looks clear and it'll be at least 85 to 95% when it looks dark. Actually, I, I did get my transition lens from your office two years two years ago, which the go become dark when they go to the sun and become lighter when they go inside. Do yep. you are you telling me it's already have the blue light? Yes, they do. Talking? We we've been putting them in there for at least the past four years. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Thank yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are there any other questions for either Patricia or Marcial? No. Nope. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe you have some more questions. I have one more question. Yes. The reason I didn't get the blue light blocking on my reading uh computer glasses is I think my doctor said it will make my it might make it too dark or something. He's like if you want a hundred percent blue light blocking, it will make your com your glass darker or something. That's what he said. Is that true? That is that is correct. Yeah. The the higher the amount of blue light blocking the lenses have, the denser the color will be. It will either be a dark gray, a dark brown, or a yellow. But the higher, again, the, 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 when we look at the products that we offer specifically, like I said, that transition lens, when, you, when it looks clear, it's 20% of the most harmful. When it's dark, it's now 85%. So if he were to give you a dark yellow lens, then it would be 85%. If he were to give you a dark gray lens, it would be similar. So yes, the darker the lens, the more, the more it can block. However, you know, the reason we produce these lenses to block out the 20%, we're, we're targeting the most harmful and we want to make sure the lenses still look cosmetically appealing. Would that be too dark for use inside if I want to block the blue light? It would be, I guess it like would be extremely I'm... yellow. You could, you could get a lens that would be extremely yellow. Yeah. Yeah. You, okay. I mean, you could use it inside, but it, it would alter your color perception. Yeah. And, you know, there's, uh, there's different things that, um, at the optical shop that we offer as well. Um, if you don't want to have a lens that's constant in um, color, um, as far as that yellow hinge to it, there's um, what we call chemistry clips, which we can actually put onto your glasses that when you're sitting at the computer, it's just a clip that actually goes into um, on your lens that one, it changes your, you know, gives you that computer prescription, but it also gives you that, um, that percentage of uh, blue light block. I remember a couple uh, last year I was at your talk, not the your talk, but the talk offered by this office. Someone said for the young kids who are born today, they suggest them wear sunglasses in front of the computer all the time to protect them because they will be using computer for their whole life. Is that what you were thinking? It's extreme. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, potentially it could work but a little too far. Yeah, you know. I always suggest sunglasses outside for children um, because at a young age, because again, you know, we don't really think about these preventative actions until we're later in life. Um, and by that time, you've already developed some type of symptom of a cataract, a pterygium, any, anything like that. Um, so I always recommend sunglasses and, you know, be careful with the type of sunglasses that you're getting for children. You want something that's a polycarbonate that has a UV filter embedded in the material itself versus going to the store and getting a really cheap pair of sunglasses for your child that may not have that UV protection. It could be just a, a plastic lens with a tint and over time tint fades. The UV sometimes is just apl uh, applied um, at, like a tint and that over time can fade out. And so then you're having a dark lens with the pupils being opened wide um, 
allowing more UV in and is doing more harm than good. So make sure that if you're getting glasses for children that you're, you know, polycarbonate is the best because it's going to give you um, that extra um, one safety and then that extra UV filtering to it. But yeah, I mean, with blue light, you can, you know, there's the very different variations. Um, you know, everybody's more than welcome to come into the opt optical shop. All of my opticians um, are versed in, in knowing the recommendations and the different products that we have to offer. Um, you know, you don't have to buy anything. If you just need um, a counseling, we are definitely there for you. Where is Do your store? Where is your store? We are, we are in the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute. Oh, right there in yeah, Irvine. We're, we're on the first floor. Um, definitely. We're like right on the, in the atrium before you get into the clinic area. We can just walk in and you, look. Yeah, um, you can. <laughs> um, with the, the COVID protocols, though, we do have you check in and then um, we kind of like filter how many people come in at, at once. But yeah, you definitely can, you can come in. Without appointment. Without an appointment. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, everybody, if there are no further questions, um, we will look forward to seeing you at future uh, community lectures. I've posted the uh, phone number for the optical shop on the group chat. If you are looking at it, great. If not, it's 949-824-7690. Um, our website is uh, uh, hosts all the other information about the other community lectures, as well as information about the optical shop and has a videos from previously recorded community lectures. So you can check there and see if there's any other topics you're interested in. Um, the address is 850 Health Sciences Road. And as Patricia said, it's best to call just to make sure that uh, the optical shop isn't too busy uh, for COVID uh, purposes. Um, so thank you all. Thank you, Patricia and Marcial for a great um, lecture. And we will uh, look forward to seeing you all at upcoming lectures. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.